YouTube, what's going on? So this is my, uh, I don't know if it's oak or what, but it's just a big display cabinet that I got that I found at a garage sale for like 50 bucks. It was more to haul it off than the actual cost. But anyways, I uh, made a new diorama recently specifically for this display case. So it fits the entire uh, length and depth of the shelf, or pretty close to it anyways. It took me about a week to build. I think there's maybe 14 hours worth of work into this. And so I'm just going to show it. All the progress is on Instagram if you want to see that. Everything on this is scratch made except for the house, the, the stop sign, the mailbox, the fire hydrant, and then obviously the people, the dogs, and the cars. But the streets, sidewalks, telephone poles, telephone lines, trees, grass, fences, uh, even like the speed limit sign and the road closed sign, which is down here, all of that stuff I, I made. Uh, the chain link fence, so all that was scratch made. So anyways, I'm just gonna show it to you Real quick, I'm not really going to talk about any die cast other than the die cast that's on the, the display. So here is kind of like a, an end shot. If you will, this is the down the street view. We've got a little parking lot here, which is basically a diorama that I've made probably at least a half dozen times by now. Although this one is slightly different with the uh, the curb and the grass and the trees. But other than that, it's pretty much the same diorama as what I've been making. And then the house portion of it is the same as the house diorama that I had. Essentially, it's slightly different, but mostly it's the same. The trees on this are a lot nicer, but... But the orientation of it and all that kind of stuff is the same. Now, I knew that I wanted a diorama that fit the whole length of the shelf. And I knew that I was going to do the house uh, with a street splitting the parking lot from the house. But I had a whole other 12 to 15 inches of diorama that I had to make. And I didn't know... What I was going to do, because I didn't have another building to use, and I didn't want to do another parking lot. So, basically, I got in my head to do, like, a vacant lot type of a thing. So, every now and then, you'll go into an older neighborhood, you'll see a vacant lot, and it'll just be, like, a trashy-looking vacant lot. And so this is my attempt at modeling that but anyways here's the rest of the house you can see the sidewalk there down the street uh, the lighting isn't great at some point i want to Im improve the lighting in the cabinet especially now because this diorama blocks you know the lights it, it completely stops the light from going down to the bottom shelves so i'd like to get some LEDs or something for that but anyway so here is the house here's the driveway all very similar to the other diorama that I had got that sweet Ford GT in the driveway but here's the vacant lot and it was the part that I was most worried about with this diorama and to me I think it almost came out to be the best part of the diorama so we have our road close sign, pavement ends, and uh, basically just a vacant lot that's been taken over by somebody living in a trailer. And we have a couple of junky beaters and some trailer trash here. But all these trees were made, I made them basically just out of sea foam and uh, coarse turf and knock leaves uh, none of which 
uh, is available in the United States. Well, the coarse turf, turf is, but the sea foam and the leaves come from Europe. So, but I think they came out pretty good. Uh, the telephone poles aren't great, but um, yeah, I mean, for, you know, it took me, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to make four poles. It took me another 20 to 30 minutes to run the, uh, the thread for the foam lines. So anyway, so this is the, the vacant lot. And I'll probably make, I don't know, some, maybe a tarp to partially cover one or two of the cars. Maybe make some trash, model some trash of some kind. The chain link fence is an old chain link fence that I made for the, uh, the street diorama that I made about a year, year and a half ago. I had these little sections left over from that. They've, I've moved around so much that they were broken, so I just re-glued them and used uh, this. I was debating on making a new chain link fence, but I don't have any of the mesh material, which isn't a big deal. I can go to Walmart and get some, but um, I just figured I'd re-glue this one and use it because it's kind of trashy looking anyways. So... But uh, I did paint uh, some lines on this diorama. It's something I haven't done very often. Uh, crosswalks are a little too close together. But uh, with that being said, uh, I'm not going to change it out. To change it out would be, I'd have to redo the whole road. So I don't want to do that uh, because of the weathering. But anyways, that's the diorama. It is probably three and a half feet by 11 inches deep. Getting it into the cabinet was fun because uh, this is this is the door here, and it's not a very big opening. So obviously, to get this in, you got to turn it. Um, up on its side and so the height of the trees and the telephone poles becomes an issue but I was able to get it in getting it out will be a totally different story but that's not going to happen for a long time so I'll cross that bridge when I get to it but overall I'm pretty happy with it I won't be making any more dioramas for the for this cabinet unless some crazy idea comes to me that I think would be significantly nicer than what I have here I don't see that happening because it's not just about making a cool display diorama to display uh, to display but you also want to have a lot of um, displayability for the cars and on this one I think it's borderline not too busy. There might be a car or two too many on the vacant lot. Um, yeah, it'd probably look a little better with a few less cars, but to be able to uh, display, I don't know, what do we got? Four, five, uh, eight, ten, eleven. 12, 15. So to have 20 cars displayed and two trailers, um, I think that's pretty good for, uh, you know, obviously if you just display them on the shelf like this, you can display quite a bit more, but they don't look, in my opinion, they don't look near as good. But the main reason I started making these dioramas in the first place was for my YouTube channel. But uh, this one here is strictly for display in the display case. I won't be shooting a lot of uh, videos on it. There might be a time or two 
where I do make a video on it. But here, here is everything at eye level. And they say when you make a model train, railroad, like a model railroad, it's supposed to be displayed at eye level. A lot of people don't realize that, but when you build your substructure that you're going to build your model train on, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, almost five feet off the ground because you're supposed to look at it at eye level. This one here is probably about a foot too low. Um, because at eye level, everything definitely looks better. It looks a lot more convincing. But um, I would just need to raise this shelf in order to do that. And if I do that, I compromise some of the space I have up here. And I don't want to do that. So this will just have to work. But I'm pretty happy with it. Figured I would share it with you guys there. And uh, I'll step back a little bit here so you can see how it kind of looks from the, uh, the living room. Pretty good, I think. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this is not something that you can just go out and buy. Not just the fact that it would be this custom size. But you can't buy a diorama in any size, really. There's only one or two that I'm aware of, and that's the American diorama, which is a cool little diorama. It's like uh, it's like the little driveway of a auto shop, like a little cement driveway with a brick wall background, and it's not bad. It actually is what inspired me to start making these parking lot dioramas. But it's not that big, and uh, it's, they, they did that one, and they did like a little dirt road, but that's pretty much it. You otherwise can't buy a diorama. You can buy a lot of stuff to make dioramas. You can buy like buildings, structures, houses, stuff like that. Uh, you can buy trees, um, but you can't really buy ready-made dioramas, so... The only way to get one of these, if you want it, especially if it's a custom size like this one, is you got to make it yourself. So this one probably has, I would say maybe $120 of material, maybe a little bit less. But, yet, but $80 of that is the house. So if you take the house out of it, you know, there's maybe only 40, between 40 and $60 of raw material for, for all the balsa wood and plaster, all the paint, uh, the paint brushes, the tape, uh, the glue. I mean, it, there's a lot of stuff that's needed to make one of these. But once you have the material, you know, you can make countless dioramas because the uh, supplies just continue to last and last and last and then when you do run out of something for example in the middle of this project I ran out of wood glue so I had to go buy a bottle of wood glue it was four dollars so you know when you're replacing a bottle of glue or a bottle of static or a bag of static grass or something like that it's very inexpensive now, when you, when you run out of the tree armatures, you know, those can be expensive because they're about $25 and they ship from Europe. You have to wait about a month for them. But with one of those boxes that I've been getting on eBay, I've purchased two of them now, uh, you, can, you can make probably 8 to 12 trees per box. And they're very, very detailed trees. Like, look at this tree here far superior to any pre-made trees that you can buy. Uh, they just look a lot more realistic. 
and uh, they just display a lot better. Uh, here's a couple other dioramas. This one here is actually the one that I made for the display cabinet. I made this to sit on the shelf next to the house diorama. The problem is, for some reason, I thought my shelf was 12 inches deep, but it's 11. And so this one wouldn't fit in there, and I would have to cut an inch of it off uh, lengthwise. And so to do that, I'm either gonna lose this back wall or I'm gonna lose the ramp. Obviously, you can't lose this. I could lose that back wall and then just build another one, moving it in. That would be a lot of work. And I thought, plus the road needs to be redone. Other than that, I think it looks good. Uh, but here's another example of how good these trees look. But I just thought it better to just make a new diorama in its entirety. Uh, there's the barn diorama there. I think this one is sold. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I have someone that's interested. The barn diorama is available if anybody wants it. Um, but that's it. Uh, the house diorama, the original house diorama, is right here. So you can see here the uh, similarities between the new one that it's on and then this one here. But this is cool because if I do want to make a video, I can just pull the house off of that and shoot a video real quick. Um, or theoretically, I could sell this and just sell it as, you know, made to go with Woodland Scenic's Corner Porch House. It's a great looking diorama. When you put that house on it and you get it out in some sunlight, it's extremely convincing. So not really sure what I'm going to do with that one yet, but for now I'll keep it. But uh, yeah, this one is a complete static diorama. It's not going to be in and out. So I just wanted to show it to you guys. And uh, I know at some point I really want to get to the point on the channel where I'm doing how-to videos to show you guys how I make these. So hopefully I can get there at some point. But anyways, I will holler at the next video. You guys take care, and I'll talk to you all later.